Hi, I'm Doug Stanhope. I used to do stand-up comedy back in the uh, back in the day. What's the name of your podcast? Right? America's favorite podcast of all time. God damn it! How come I haven't been fucking canceled? <laughs> Every fucking day because of your bit. Annoying each other equally. My personality is is all I've got, and it's not that great. Oh my god, I love Chad Ryden. We love Chad Ryden. Okay, but, I love it. but something Jackie Onassis was combing out of her hair. <laughs> I've been living like a shit bag my entire life. I, I don't give a fuck. Smell rose. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> My license suspended for some bullshit. We're comics. No one ever f***ed us because of our hair. That's exactly right. Now I'm spiraling out on hate. To, just so she could kick kids' asses in the neighborhood that I wanted to fight, but I legally couldn't? I'm a lazy son of a bitch. Uh, good. Old decades of my life that I don't remember. That's how I always fantasized about it. We're drunk together. Yeah. Once again. From beautiful East Nashville, it's America's favorite podcast of all time, with America's favorite comedian of all time, Chad Ryden. Tonight, the legendary Doug Stanhope, with special guest appearances from Bird Clouds McKenzie Green, Bingo Bingaman, and Chad Shank. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here, Chad. The- Thank you so much for watching. My name is Chad Ryden, America's favorite comedian of all time. Thank you. Well, it, at least it used to be. Because of the pandemic, I haven't done a comedy show in a year. I don't even know if I remember any of my jokes anymore. Now, a lot of you are probably saying to yourselves, "Good, rude." The only way I still feel like a comic anymore is when I'm being mean to complete strangers on the internet and when I'm able to video chat with my comedian friends. The other night, I got to talk to one of my very favorite comedians and people on this planet, the great Doug Stanhope. Deadbeat hero to drunks and comedy fans around the world. I love doing shows with Doug because his audiences are comedy savvy. They do not put up with any hacky bullshit. You've really got to bring it fast and furious, and they will reward you if you do a good job. They love to party and have a good time, and it's always an incredible show, and then you stay up all night drinking. (laughs) And then you do the exact same thing the next day, and the day after that, and the day after that. It can be rough on your body, but man, is it fun to hang out with Mr. Stanhope. This conversation was no different. We had a ball. If you want to see if you can hang with us, play this drinking game. Take a shot every single time you see me take a swig of gin. You will get plowed. Doug was like, when is this going to come out? And I said, tomorrow. Uh, No, the next day I was completely hungover and still was the day after that. But I finally got it together. And here we go. Here's our full conversation with Doug Stanhope and a few mutual friends. Well, before we go any further, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Turn notifications on and follow me everywhere on the internet at Chad Ryden. And please pick up some merch um, and my comedy albums over on Bandcamp or on my website, fuckthehomeless.com. This episode is sponsored by comedynews.org. Comedynews.org is an evil global conglomerate hell-bent on the dissemination of comedy news, interviews, reviews, and stuff. It's not memes and crap. It's everything that's going on in the world of comedy. So give them a follow on Twitter and Instagram and tell them I sent you. All right. Let's check out the conversation I had with Doug Stanhope. Now, the fun officially begins. All right. (laughs) Here we are. How the hell are you doing? Good. Hang on, let me get my good background. Let me switch chairs. I'm gonna get that smoking sign in there. It's a there we go. Are you still smoking and drinking or are you doing one of your dry out sessions? There you go. Answers my question. Yes. Every time I do a podcast, 
I like, I want to keep talking because by the end of it, like I drink to do it. And yeah. then, uh, and then uh, I go, I, I want to keep talking. <laughs> Will yeah. you hold for a second while I go grab some gin? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Are, are we recording? Yeah. Fuck. If we're recording, I guess I have to fill time. Hi, I'm Doug Stanhope. I used to do stand-up comedy back in the uh, back in the day, back when you could just say anything you wanted. Yeah, I didn't know if you would uh, do this or Sorry, not. I, so I, didn't, I, I didn't have a beverage I, ready. I didn't know if uh, we were. Oh my God! Please, I'll, I'll keep killing time. Go get a mixer and some ice. Ah, we're not in a hurry. No. This is this is my preferred method of consumption. You really drink fucking. You're like Tracy, you know Chaley and <laughs> Chaley's Tracy, Miss yeah. Tracy. Yeah, yeah, she drinks fucking shots of vodka and then club soda separately. <laughs> we'll put them together. Why are you drink? There's it's a drink. I'm a vodka drinker. Yeah, but of all the uh, the top five alcohols. If I'm going to do a shot, I would do a shot of any other alcohol than vodka. Vodka yeah. is a perfect mixer. Yeah, I would drink a shot of gin before a shot of vodka. It's fucking awful alone. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning into the uh, other Chad and Doug podcast, how often did I call you thinking you were Chad Shank, the co-host of my podcast? At least twice a year. And it's always a delight because it's like, oh, one of my favorite people in comedy, Doug Stanhope, is giving me a call. And I answer it all pie-eyed. And then you're so crushed and disappointed as soon as you find out you don't have Chad no, Shank on the line. No, I'm embarrassed. Yeah. I'm embarrassed <laughs> that I like, called the wrong Chad. Yeah. Like how how bad would it be if like I I uh, someone just uh, made some reference to this today, where I like yeah like like what if like the new like uh, Charles Manson was named Stanhope and like you Stanhope is not a common name. What if like someone fucking awful all yeah. of a sudden did a, a Walmart shooting? and beat a record and they were named chad ryden you're like i'm never gonna be seen on google again i'm you gone you honestly you can't ruin my brand i'm i'm uh i'm fine there's one other chad ryden i know of uh there's a guy in denver who's a, a high up defense contractor guy i guess he works under the magic mountain or something but he's got all this security clearance and um I, I, like I, I've seen him like he pops up in my little Google alerts for myself every once in a while. Like he, he's a runner and some other bullshit, but I found him on LinkedIn. That's the only social media he's on. And I sent him a message. I was like, Hey, Chad Ryden, how the hell are you? And he was like, Oh, it's you. Cause you know, every once in a while he Googles himself and he sees all the stupid bullshit I do. And he's like, ah, I love, I love keeping up with all your wacky antics. <laughs> so I have like, not done that forever. There's, I think there were, like when Google first came out, I looked up other Doug Stanhopes and like with phone numbers, the the, the white pages or whatever. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I called one and he was like some 80 year old farmer in Nebraska or something. And I go, I, I, I'm sorry, I just found you. My name's Doug Stanhope too. He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> That guy still hasn't found the internet. That's funny. And I've got a Google alert set up for everybody in my family. And like my, my dad's goes off every once in a while. And sometimes it's him and we all get scared. But then uh, there's also an, like another David Ryden. My dad made national weird. news headlines in 2016 like, he when he was quoted in Mother Jones magazine saying he wanted to execute all three branches of the government. And here I am focusing on the boring David Ryden. Now I've got Google alerts set up Great for everybody choice. in my family just in case they start fucking up. I can jump on top of that shit. Uh, yeah. Hennigan, my manager, has yeah. Doug Stanhope Google alerts. But I would not. I don't want to know one fucking... Uh, the, the days of Googling myself are yeah. done. Well, yeah, like you've already, you did the interview. You were there for it. Like there's no, no point. I, just, I don't want to, I, I don't want to find bad shit people said about me. 
yeah, yeah. I, I was way stronger when I was younger. The, the longer I live, the more it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always delighted to find a new person that hates me. Like at this point, I'm just happy for the attention and interaction, you know, <laughs> with another living human being. Uh, this is a lie. So it's Please nice. leave me alone. Feel like I'm not completely disconnected from the world. Yeah, I, 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 I used to uh, bitch about, uh, wait, how come I haven't been fucking canceled? <laughs> because no one pays attention to me. No one knows about me. Well, and I feel like you've scorched the earth. Like you've, you've, you've tried to cancel yourself over and over over the years. It's oh, hard to shit. cancel somebody up. who... Please oh, hold. Shit. All right. All right, there, we're back. It's, it's hard to cancel somebody who is very upfront about who they are and honest about the shit they're saying and doing, you know? I, uh, yeah. But I, I, like, I still feel like, like, okay, now I should do everything in my power to not be famous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, because you've got what you need. You've got, you've got a compound. You've got your, your fans that follow you wherever you go. You could do a, show in a car wash and it'll be successful. So it's like, you don't really need all the, you, you don't need to be running to auditions or chasing some TV dream. Yeah. I, 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 well, except for the not working part for a year, I go, Oh, I can see where I thought I had a nest egg. <laughs> right. But you guys like your podcast is very successful. You've got the Patreon set up. Like I'm sure people buy merch. You've got money coming in. Not yeah, not as much as is going out, which I never actually paid attention to till I was home for a year. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh wait, what the fuck? What what how, we're paying this much for what? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, the, 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 there's even even on a small budget, there's a lot of fucking bills that uh, I I wasn't aware of because I was doing gigs. Yeah. Oh, I I could do one gig and pay for that. Oh, until you're not doing gigs, then you can't pay for that. When was the last gig? What was the last gig you did before the shit hit? March, the March 12th. You were like the Pacific Northwest, right? Is that right? I I, I had the most uh, circuitous, if that's the right word, stupid fucking. I was I, I did uh, Northwest, then flew to the East Coast to do two gigs and then back to the West Coast. Hennigan bookings. Okay. Yeah. But was also, that a triple run? <laughs> no, it's flying. That's why I didn't complain because I like to accrue miles for status on the airlines. Right. Was it like you do the the airport bar tour, I think, once a year, like where you're trying to make sure you get I, your. I used, to, yeah, the airport pub crawl. Yeah. Hashtag airport pub crawl where I just fly at the end of the year. Oh, I'm only 20,000 miles short of diamond medallion, the best you could get. So I'm going to fly to fucking Atlanta, through Atlanta to Johannesburg, South Africa, without leaving an airport up to Amsterdam, and then back through Detroit, Vegas, Salt Lake to Tucson, and then home. 77 hours, 57 in the air. <laughs> It's so funny, like, uh, and you enjoy that because, like, you love drinking in airport in bars in general, but airport bars especially, and yeah. plus to, to reach your goal of having that diamond platinum whatever status, like that's a that's a fun little getaway for you. Yeah, uh, I, I I did it when I didn't even need the fucking miles anymore. <laughs> I just love flying. I miss, and I know I could do it again. But I don't. I don't even want to see a fucking airport again. No. It's normal. Yeah. It, it, well, okay. What would it take to get you back out to doing shows? Like, uh, what what what's your benchmark for before I go back out? I need this, this, and this. Well, uh, it's 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 when it's normal again. Yeah. I'm not gonna do fucking half. Like, there's nothing more embarrassing for a comic than having a. Uh, oh, uh, uh, a sold out theater, but it's half full. Yeah. Now, would you consider doing like a drive-in movie theater? A lot of people are doing that shit. No. You wouldn't. 
Sorry, we're fucking seizing up a lot here. Uh, right, drive in. No, I, I I'm gonna do the dates that keep getting pushed off. Yeah, like a year ago, they pushed. Like they pushed Denver from April to May or something. They had high hopes and now it's pushed till August. So yeah. you know, whenever they're open yeah. and, and That's- doing shows, I'll, I'll, I'll show up there. I just don't want to. Yeah. That's what was so funny to me at the beginning where like March, April, people started postponing stuff where they're like, okay, spring tours now fall 2020. It's like, motherfucker, this is going to last a couple of years, you know? Yeah, I, I have no idea, and I don't think about it because I really love being home. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, how long have you been a road comic? Since okay, so I started doing comedy in November two thousand, but I really started doing the road two thousand five. So, like you know, like fifteen yeah. years before shit hit the fan, and it's it is it's jarring to just be home and not have that like a lot of my therapy for the first part of that year was just being glad to have another human being to talk to and riff with and bounce shit off of that's not my daughter or my brother you know (laughs) i get it uh yeah i i haven't slept in the same bed for uh, uh, an entire year since i was 17 and i'm 53 yeah so yeah just i i love like Oh, wait. Yeah. I've owned this home for almost 16 years, but I haven't spent that much time in it. And when you come off the road, it's just about paying bills. It's not about, Oh fuck, I should paint that. (laughs) That's like all the joys of being a homeowner. I'm not in a hurry to go back. Uh, And right now the, the, the problem is like we have August dates booked in the States that could happen. Yeah. Uh, and then we have UK dates that have been pushed now two years to spring of 2022. Well, I'm going to have to relearn an entire fucking hour or write an entire hour That's... or take old stuff that could be relevant. I just have to change the context of the old stuff. That's a lot of fucking work to put yeah. an hour together. Yeah. That's what I'm worried about the most is I, I, I can barely remember shit to begin with, even mm-hmm. if I'm doing it every single night. I I don't know if I'm going to remember any of my act, but then the flip side of that is it, maybe that's for the best. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that, that, that's the one positive thing that I think about. This is going to be like starting over from scratch yeah. where I'm going to be an open micer yeah. pacing around outside behind the emergency exit by the dumpster going. Yeah. Which is, is the only thing I actually think is a, a positive. Like I, yeah, I like that idea because I'm and, go ahead. And, and then also, like, you know, I was really starting to get burned out on a lot of shit where I'm like, God, you know, I'm spinning my wheels. What am I even doing? And taking a lot of stuff for granted. And this has been a good year of reflection where I can sit and think like, oh, fuck, no, I this is all I can do. And I value this. And holy shit, do I miss it? Like, fuck, what, like, imagine the rest of my life not having, you know, a crowd to to, to bitch at and then dr- drink for free. <laughs> you know, like, I, 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 I really value all this shit that I was really taking for granted for a, a while. And I realize how, how lazy I've gotten and how much shit I just kind of, you know. I, I'm not suicidal at all, but. <laughs> yeah. I, I, do, I do see the upside. I, 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 when I turned 50, I go, all right, it's all gravy. The <laughs> fact that I lived 50 years, yeah, yeah the, the rest of it I can just let slide. But now I'm not suicidal, but I think about it every fucking day because, you know, no, I can't. I, 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 there's nothing I could do as a day job. Yeah. That, well, that's uh, funny. Like, uh, you know how, like, when they do mental health checks, uh, they'll always ask you, do you feel suicidal? Do you think about suicide? 
and I have to lie to them because you can't say you can't say you think of suicide. You can't say you've had suicidal thoughts. I know that. But the reality is I think about it all the time because of one of your jokes. Uh, you used to do a bit about um, the coward's way out. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and uh, the different coming up with different creative ways to kill yourself. <laughs> Uh, because you wanted to do one that nobody that's ever a different, did. Yeah, that, that that's a, I think those are at least ten years ago. apart. Those yeah. two, like I have suicide bits on everything, which is why I have this suicidal fan base that sends yeah. me emails. And you go, all right, I got to deal with this. I created this problem. Yeah, but that's a, that's the thing. I've told my therapist this. I was like, I, I do think about it every day in every situation I'm in. Like I could be in Aldi getting groceries, and I look around me. And I try to figure out the funniest way to kill myself with just the things in the room because of your bit. <laughs> Where I'm like, if, if shit went down, how would I kill myself right now while I'm waiting in this line? And I, so I think about it every day. And I would never do it, but the thought is there, you know? I, 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 I'm doing someone else's podcast uh, come. And I go, oh, that would be the place to do a Bud Dwyer. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very popular podcast. Yeah. At the end of the month, and I go, wow, I could do a Bud Dwyer on that podcast. Yeah, Bud Dwyer is a politician from Pennsylvania who shot uh, himself in the head with a 357 during a press but, uh, conference yeah, in 1987. Part, I've loved COVID. I loved being home until winter struck. Oh, yeah. Did you guys yeah, get a lot of snow? I saw a photo. You did get snow. Yeah, yeah. We got snow. Yeah, it lasted a couple of days. It's funny for the first hour. Hey, we're, you're not supposed to get snow in Arizona. Yeah. Ah, look at how cute it is. I'll take some pictures. And then you go, that's still there. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't shoveling shit. I'm just going to get on the couch till it melts in a day. That's it. Like, I'm in Nashville. It snows every two or three years. We had about three inches. And they don't know what to do. I can drive on ice, but everybody else can't. And so there's no reason to. I can walk to the store. Fuck it. I'm just staying in the house for a week. Who gives a shit? So, I didn't, yeah, I didn't go anywhere or do anything, and it was fine. Uh, Nashville. Uh, do you know Raylan Nelson? I don't think I do. Uh, she's uh, she's uh, Willie Nelson's granddaughter. No shit. Yeah, she started a podcast. I just did that. She just sent me a bunch of swag. I uh, go get it but it doesn't matter uh yeah i'll check it out yes uh, uh yeah ray ray lynn it's a weird spelling r-a-e-l-y-n nelson nelson nice. uh and she does it out of willie nelson's uh he's got some kind of museum there okay yeah 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 so she does it out of there uh because uh, uh i was gonna i was gonna i didn't realize Till I was on her podcast and I said, uh, I want to ask more questions about you, but all your listeners already know they've heard that. that yeah. yeah. So, uh, and she said, no, this is our first podcast. We're stockpiling. Uh, They're not even out yet. Oh, uh, <laughs> like, that's funny. Oh, fuck. I, I wish I'd have said that at the beginning rather yeah. than the end. Uh, but uh, bird cloud Mackenzie. Hell Yeah. So she's like, she moved. She's in Arizona now, I think. Yeah, she's yeah. here now. You stole her away from us. God damn it. Yes, I did. Ah, yeah, she's one of the good ones for sure. Yeah, uh, fucking Nashville. We uh, Nashville has come up so many times in the last week. Uh, yeah, there's a club there, Zanies. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, fucking Zanies is one of the best clubs in the country. Yeah. Uh, you you know you have the distinction of doing the last smoking show at Zany's Nashville. Oh really? Yep. So 2006, they changed the state laws, and uh, Zany's decided, all right, fuck it, we're not doing any more smoking shows. Last one is Doug Stanhope. Wow, so, I did yeah. not know that. Little piece of history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those. Uh, that was one of my favorite podcasts early on when I started podcasting. It was a goof, but the, the, we did get some good ones and the Dorfman brothers. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, that was a fun one. You were around for that. Yeah. Yeah. I was sitting oh my God. there. Bingo came and did, uh, did laundry at your house. She did. Yo, know, she was fucking, uh, 
she wanted to kill herself after she got back from that. <laughs> now, what I, what was so rough where she wanted to kill herself? We had a you, good time. No, you. She put on a face that she was having a good time. <sighs> oh, that's heartbreaking. Uh, no, I I can't remember what you were doing. She sung. She's, she had some kind of goofy game on your phone. <laughs> Do you have any idea what this is? I may have been playing Pokemon or some shit. I don't know. No, it was. Hang on. We're going to call bingo. All right. <laughs> oh, I feel horrible because she sang me one of her songs and she was telling me stuff oh. about the book. Oh, which had not. So, okay. So you annoyed each other equally. <laughs> Do what? Oh, yeah. No, you no, annoyed no. each other equally because. <laughs> Bingo never <laughs> listens to my podcast, but she did randomly where I was talking about because she's still making music and yeah. then she'll come over. Do you want to hear it again? Do you want to hear it again? <laughs> and so I I, I, I I made fun of that on a podcast that she listened to. I'm like, hey, this is my safe space, lady. My <laughs> podcast, you, that's not for you. That's yeah. for listeners. Yeah. And so she still gives me shit. Ah. Now she oh she's gonna give me shit about this. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember what you were doing. Oh, I feel I, awful. A, a certain writer uh, was uh, there. I think one of the nights you were there. Hi. Hi, you're on. Uh, you're on a podcast with me and Chad Ryden from Nashville, Tennessee. Oh my God, I love Chad Ryden. We love Chad Ryden, okay, but, but you have to remember that fucking annoying thing he was doing. Like it was like a trivia game or something on his okay, phone. Okay, that is one of my flaws. I do well, fuck you around on my to phone do a lot, laundry but in my defense, left you alone hey. with him. Oh, yeah, now I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I didn't know before. I was I just know. thinking of <laughs> Chad Ryden. Do you remember the thing he was doing? Angry Birds or some shit. I don't know. Uh, okay, maybe. Yeah, no, it was something he had to talk to everyone in the room about. Okay. Like, <laughs> it was like a trivia thing. It wasn't trivia, but it was like something he'd like, just tell you what he's doing on his phone. And it was annoying the fuck. And then you went over to do laundry and you came back so irate. <laughs> but then then he said no i remember she was playing me her songs i go oh so you're even <laughs> oh right see that's so great okay i get it okay bye-bye now <laughs> <laughs> she's the best first of all she comes on and immediately is like oh yeah i love chad redden then 15 seconds later Oh, that guy. Yeah, I was full of shit just five seconds ago. <laughs> we were we were just we 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 did a uh, our buddy Hack Oddity, Andy Baker. Yeah. In the UK, he has a uh, he started a podcast uh, where he he does uh, crime and nourishment. You're on death row. <laughs> and you explain why you would be on death row. Yeah. And then he's gonna cook your last meal. What's your last meal? Oh, and, uh, shit. Me? My last meal? No, 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 we just did this. Oh, okay. So, like, he didn't really have the, 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 his payoff was, okay, I'm gonna make it, and then I'm gonna call you for part two, oh. where I eat it in front of you. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, it's funny in theory, except for the fact that they're not on death row, so they could go make it themselves. Yeah. So, so Bingo and I, Bingo's got very strange eating habits. She's, mm -hmm. I, I, I spent uh, tens of thousands of dollars in eating disorder clinics. <laughs> that's that's never been put out there. Uh, <laughs> I know, like I've had to pull over, like we were on our way to Birmingham and she hadn't eaten anything. So like the only thing available was like Starbucks um, oatmeal. Uh, and it was kind of funny, like she didn't know me hardly at all. We'd only been hanging out, hanging out for a couple of days on this little run of shows we were doing. And.
All right, I, I, you froze up for most of that, but. Sorry. Uh, you were saying she has eating disorder yeah, stuff. Yeah. So, so we, uh, we gave him uh, my comfort food, one of my comfort foods that would disgust anyone. And then hers, like she, uh, at home, on the road, yeah, she eats what you can get. But she, so one of her things that she would eat solely for months was uh, cottage cheese and V8 juice mixed together and microwaved <laughs> to the point where the cottage cheese would turn into squeaky cheese. <laughs> what do they call that in Wisconsin? Oh. Uh, no, something wacky. I don't know. Curds and... Yeah, it's... Uh, Cheese curds. Cheese, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it kind of cheese is just cheese curds. Hmm. But V8 mixed in in microwave, that's next level shit. And mine was uh, jello <laughs> with uh, French dressing, bacon bits, bacos. They're right here. Yeah. Still. And uh, eventually I put caviar on that. And, and is that legitimately what you would want? I eat that alone. I don't eat that to show off. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid, my mother would make jello molds with the fruit in it, like mm -hmm. uh, fucking mandarin oranges and pineapple and shit floating in it. But she would put it on a bed of lettuce with Thousand Island dressing. And as kids, you just want the jello, but you'd yeah. have to eat other fucking salad shit parts of it. So I, I still enjoy that. He liked that, but eating Bingo's fucking cheese curds and V8 juice, he was gagging. Yeah, uh, that's that's wild. That's right, wild so shit. Point being that when like we're doing the follow-up where he's actually making the shit, we did the first part of why we're on death row and what we would eat. Yeah. All right, now you have to eat this shit. <laughs> His whole premise was, I'm going to eat your fucking beautiful meal in front of you. Yeah. That makes sense because it's no, trash. we're going to put you fucking in our position of eating some awful shit that we actually <laughs> like and you have to eat it. And, uh, but the, the point is that when he brought the V8 and cottage cheese out of the microwave, he said, this looks like something Jackie Onassis was combing out of her hair. <laughs> Are we there? Did we yeah. fucking freeze up again? Uh, I heard every minute of that. That was great. <laughs> what? Hey, uh, so I yeah, he said he says that, and she laughs heartily. <laughs> yeah. I go, the best part is when I explain this joke to Bingo later on, and then she laughs again. <laughs> and then I go, "Do you know who Jackie Onassis is?" She goes, "Nope." <laughs> uh, it's still funny, but and, it then, and then he says, "She was married to JFK," and she laughs again. I go, "Do you know, do you know about the assassination?" No. <laughs> She's the best audience oh. member you have, aside from my audience members. God damn. Who, who just blacked out the entire show because they started <laughs> drinking at 4 p.m. in the parking lot and don't remember anything other than be either laughing or getting thrown out. Yeah. Yeah. Victor's <laughs> the best audience ever. The same joke four times. Oh, she's so great. Just fantastic. <laughs> that, have you done any shows? Hell no. Uh, like not since uh, like a year ago this month and I've had no interest and motherfuckers here have, uh, have not stopped doing shows like, uh, you know, local comics have been doing underground basement shows and shit nonstop. And, um, you know, they invite me to this shit and I'm like, I'm not going anywhere, man. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I could die. Like I'm, I'm not in good health. No, and then I've been smoking. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a, 40 years. I've, I've been living like a shit bag my entire life. I I don't know if I can make it even without COVID. And uh, but you know, and then Zanies they closed down for a couple of weeks, but then like you know, they made national international news when DL Hughley fucking passed out on the goddamn stage five minutes into his fucking set. Um, and so you know, that motherfucker had 
Oh, I, dude. I to another country. So D.L. Hughley was in Texas doing shows during COVID and then flew to L.A. to do his goddamn radio show with like four or five other people in the room and then flew back to Nashville or flew to Nashville and did uh, Thursday night. And then the first show Friday, second show Friday, he passes out five minutes into his act on stage, falls down, and they're like, oh, shit, D.L. Hughley. Well, motherfucker tests positive for COVID, so he's been in three international airports and flying back and forth across the country, interacting with God knows how many motherfuckers, you know, <laughs> taking pictures with stupid people in the airport. And... uh and then, yeah, and multiple sold out audiences interacting with them, fully COVID positive. Uh, and then, you know, like Zany's shut down for a week and wiped down the tables and then reopened for business. <laughs> it's like, fuck. Oh, God. It's shit is wild, man. It, 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 like our, our governor's a Republican. He doesn't give a fuck. It's like he's trying to get people killed. It's it's like little tiny Texas over here. It's, uh, yeah, I, I know Mackenzie. Mackenzie's been coming back and forth for yeah. a while now. Yeah. And then I talked to her when she's in Tennessee. Now it's all fucking wild west here. Fuck it. She's kind of a virus denier or was. Is but. she? Ooh. I don't give a fuck. No, well, that's the attitude is I don't give a fuck. She may think it's real. She just doesn't give a shit about it. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I just woke up naked at my neighbor's that's house. It. And that's, I, I'm just trying to find a to-go container for some cocaine I found. Yeah, and that's the average day for her. Like, the last time I hung out with her, it we were... Uh, we went to Smell Rose, an awesome bar just down the block from Zanny's. It was uh, her and uh, uh, her her bandmate, goddamn whatever uh, the fuck her name is, Jasmine, Jasmine and uh, Josh Headley and Ralphie May. It was the last time I hung out with Ralphie May, and that motherfucker was shit faced and fall down drunk. It was so great. Wait, which one? Uh, Ra well, everybody. But Ralphie, Ralphie fell down. And, you know, Ralphie, I've been around him a bit, but he, I'd never seen him fall down drunk. He, like, he doesn't drink a lot. Who picked up the tab? Well. On a Ralphie. bar tab that got Ralphie May drunk <laughs> at 700 pounds. Well, we were drinking at Zany's for free. And then we took the party down the road. So and they're still in business. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's the last time I hung out with Kenzie and uh, she, she, we were sitting in a booth and she like stood up and took off her shirt and was topless in the bar. Just yeah. kind of scoped it out. And it's like, that is nothing to her. That is just the yeah. average night is I'm going to, whip out my tits and drink another beer and it's like god damn i love this girl yeah, yeah and, and uh not to be uh a realist but i'm glad that i will be dead before mackenzie is not hot <laughs> yeah she's in her mid-30s she yeah. still is fucking hot as day and as uh grotesque and a beautiful Way. Yeah. Fun. One of the most fun people uh, and up for anything. Just a gem of a person. Absolutely wonderful. Hang on. You, we, we froze up again. You God know what? Internet. My fucking internet goes. That's all right. My internet goes out. Uh, Every time uh, Chaley leaves town. <laughs> that's that's the downside of living on the frontier. Drunk dialing McKenzie now. <laughs> Hello? Hello, McKenzie. You're on the... Uh, you're on a...
Yeah. Yes, I do. How's it going? We're, we're talking about you. He said the last time he saw you was with Ralphie May, who was so drunk he was falling down at what was the name oh, of that bar? Uh, Smell Rose. Smell Rose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. I just, I, I, I just said the, uh, the, the, the greatest part about you is I will be dead before you get old and ugly. I said it even sweeter. I, I, we're just on Zoom. Oh, sweet. Cool. Well, we wanted to come down this weekend, but we'll, be a, we'll, we'll have to come a um, couple, couple weeks from now. Um, trying to get my shit together up here. What? what when, uh, when did will you do you say that you leave on the eighth? Yeah, I'm leaving on the eighth. I'm flying to Nashville on the eighth. Right. And uh Hell yeah. Barnabas had school today. You'd be very proud of him. He was a good boy. They gave us a bag of change to throw at him if he's bad. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I, I'll, I'll I'll call you back. I'm just drunk down like people were talking about. So I'll, I'll, oh, okay. I'll call. Oh, cool, Chad. I'll, I'll call you back. Bye, y'all. I, I love you. Love you. See, what I didn't say to her, Chad, is that I already threw my ditch bag. She's up in Phoenix, which is like four hours away. Yeah. And uh, she's up there with Barnabas, who she's talking about, is this stray dog I found that I fell in love with, but he's a monster and incorrigible, can hop a seven-foot fence and follow you because he's got abandonment issues. He's this giant, I don't know, shepherd doby rot mix, just giant fucking gangly dog. So her friend that she's uh, with up in uh, Phoenix, they took the dog. And uh, so I, so this morning I patched, packed my ditch bag. Do you have a ditch bag? I kind of keep one in my car. So, because if I'm going to get out of here, I'm hopping in the car and I'm getting the fuck out. Yeah, so I have a, a ditch bag that is me packed and it's been for like almost three years. <laughs> I've had no need for it, but you have a ditch bag. like, a, yeah. And I have an inventory written on top. It's got fucking five shots of this. It's got winter clothes. It's got a pair of shorts if it's summer, like just everything you might need. So this morning I was almost ready to fucking leave and go up and see them. I already put my ditch bag in the car. So tomorrow I might go up and see her and my dog. They get hammered for a night. That's I've only left town in, in, in a year, one day I went to Tucson, and one day in a year, I went to Phoenix. New Year's Eve, I spent with them up in Phoenix with the, my old dog, Barnabas. Nice. Yeah, I've only left town twice as well. Like, I went, I went to Lexington, Kentucky to buy a car, and then I went to McMinn County in East Tennessee to register that car. Because it's 24 bucks a year instead of goddamn 150 bucks in Davidson County, Nashville. So I've, I've left town twice just for some car shit. Yeah. That's uh, it. Yeah. Bisbee, uh, there's no emissions and uh, insurance is fucking nothing. Yeah. Like, oh, and Arizona, when you get an Arizona license, it expires at when you're 63, no matter how old you wow. are. That's fantastic. Yeah, I, I always register my cars in East Tennessee because it's so much fucking cheaper. And, uh, and, and I tell them that I work from home and I drive five miles a day and my insurance rates are, you know, a, a thousand percent cheaper. It's crazy. I, you know, lives north or visits. Yeah, just Hennigan has a driver's license from Arizona. 
with his LA address on it. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, like, are you there? Yeah. Am I locked uh, up for you? At some point. Now you're, the, you're back. At some point in the nineties, I got my license suspended for some bullshit. And uh, instead of just paying the fines and getting the SR 22 insurance or whatever the fuck it is, I, I, what I did was I took my brother's information and I went and I got a driver's license with his name and information and my photo. And then I just drove on his fake license for like a couple of years. And then um, eventually I, you know, I, I went through the channels. I had enough money to go face the charges and, and deal with my legal shit and get my license back. And it's kind of funny. My brother went to get his license renewed when it expired. And by this time, your face was kept in the computer system. Previously, they didn't have that shit. And so he goes to get his license renewed. And it's my goddamn face pops up in the computer. And he's fatter and, you know, looks totally different. And they're like, this doesn't match. And he's like, uh, yeah, I just gained a lot of weight in the last two years. And so he had trouble getting his license, but he got oh, it. I, I, I did this mohawk thing, and then I realized uh, that my fucking uh, passport expired yesterday. <laughs> and then I was going to shave my whole my passport. I'm like, fuck it. Who cares? I'm an old man. Just yeah. keep a fucking weird... Yeah. This is my COVID haircut. Yeah, I can't. I can't grow hair anymore. I cut my goddamn. I cut my hair off. I don't like the the days of me looking good with hair are over. So fuck it. What? Listen, we're comics. No yeah. one ever fucked us because of our hair. That's exactly right. And that's what I told people. It's like I've never been the hot dude in class. You know, like that's not like my my personality is is all i've got and it's not that great so the hair's your, not going to do it your doppelganger uh phone number chad shank always says yeah like yeah i always get late with my personality but no he's actually fucking good looking too you in a biker way yeah. but yeah. Well, and he's got that golden but, voice like he my knees get weak when chad shank starts talking like that motherfucker has, he's got a lot of things going good for him. Yeah, but, uh, you know, the best of us, everything's going good for me, but I still want to kill myself. Of course. Yeah. Because you're a rationally thinking person who has eyes and ears. Like if you, I, I really, honestly, I think if you, if, if there's a person on this planet who has not thought about killing themselves in the last year, something's definitely wrong with that motherfucker. Yeah, like, uh, we 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 do these uh, Patreon happy hours, yeah, where we talk to fans and just glide through them. Okay, what is there? I said, is there anyone in here that hasn't thought about killing themselves? in the last year and not a hand went up out of a hundred and some people. <laughs> That's yeah. so wild. But you know, like the, I, I read this book early on about a year ago, I read this book pale rider by Laura Spinney. And she talks about pandemics throughout history, but especially the 1918 one. And it's, it's crazy because we've repeated history. We've done all the same stuff wrong and, and it's stupid. But the, the one thing I, I got out of that book that makes me feel hopeful is that after the pandemic was pretty much over, the third wave was over and people were generally healthy and had uh, herd immunity. At that point, worldwide, orgies broke out everywhere. <laughs> like it was worldwide pandemonium. And then they had the roaring twenties where shit was wild for a fucking decade because people were so pent up with this frustration of not being able to interact with people. They got out of their houses and started fucking everything that moved. Yeah. Uh, I, I just read a, the, a New York times article today about the baby bust of 2020. <laughs> like that people are not having children. Yeah, why would which you? Was, it, it was a weird. Setup. 
<clears throat> well, they were they were uh, coming at this where uh, everyone predicted, which never happened in my mind. Everyone predicted that there would be another baby boom of all these people shacked up and fucking. No, no. Like, no, that was the first thing I thought of is everyone's going to now realize I can't have kids, yeah. which is what they did yeah. with the New York Times article. Well, everyone was predicting. No, I don't know anyone that was predicting that. No, no. everyone is figuring out, oh, I have to take care of my kids, not fucking child free people like me paying taxes to fucking take care of your stupid kids. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. So you have, you're stuck. with. Yeah. You're, you're a homeschooler. Oh, now you are. Yeah. Fucking teach that kid. You don't know how you learn shit. Yeah. Fuck you. It's so funny. There, there was like an article. There, there was a, there was an article locally. I think that where they were, they were talking kind of like the same thing where they were like, um, it's it's a, a tragedy that people aren't having kids right now because in that means that in the future, uh, Social Security is going to fall apart because not enough people are paying in. It's like uh, that's not that's not our problem as honestly as a generation. That's not our problem to make sure old motherfuckers. So uh, pyramid scheme doesn't fall apart like that's s some people are smart enough to not fucking procreate not me but other people if, if, if you're if you're fucking so someone takes care of you when you're old you're a fucking psychopath yeah it's insane you're a sociopath like my daughter my daughter's 17 she's gonna turn 18 in two months and she will never have kids she doesn't want kids she hates kids she's not gonna have them and um it's 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 great that's fine uh, listen, my listen, but I, i'm sorry to interrupt no but make ahead. sure Tell her, don't keep sexting me these photos until two months from now, because I don't want to be a Crystalia. <laughs> well, you you have no, there's no chance of that happening. So you're solid. Uh, she, Why, she's ugly? No, she's a lesbian. She has no interest. She has no interest whatsoever. Well, that, that, tell that to her OnlyFans page. <laughs> Honestly, what I told her, like, whatever hustle you could come up with to make some money, do it. Like, I, you know, what do I care? I'll help you. <laughs> I've tried, God knows, I've tried to exploit her for profit and fun. You know, <laughs> that's half my act is it, it jokes about interacting with her and, and other shithead parents that, you know, get their uh, asses in a knot. I, 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 there's, there's a couple things I love about COVID. I mean, there's a lot of things I love about COVID, but the two are uh, LA, New York flight, everyone <laughs> leaving yeah. and going to Austin, which has already been overrun with fucking comedians for fucking two decades. Yeah. Every yeah. Bill Hicks guy. Yeah. Um, and now they're now they're glutting it with Joe Rogan and his followers. It's fucking you're way too late. The yeah. traffic in Austin is almost Austin. worse than LA before you brought 12 more people out there. Uh yeah, uh, it, 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 that's what's so funny to me. Yeah, if you're moving from New York or LA to Texas. My guess is you haven't spent a lot of time in Texas because otherwise you would not fucking go there. Like Austin's a great town and I love it. And there's other, you know, I've had a lot of fun in Texarkana and fucking, I, I don't know, half a dozen cities you, across Texas. But an awful piece of shit city like Phoenix yeah. where it's just spread out and Hey, you want to go to a really cool bar? It's 25 minutes away. No, I don't want to go to a bar 25 minutes away. Nah. But some of the best stories I've had are out of Houston and Phoenix. Uh, but the idea of moving to Austin is uh, the, the idea that people are leaving LA and New York is as uh, makes me as satisfied with pandemic as parents who have to live with their fucking children that i pay for yeah yeah i mean if i i could see like buying a cabin in the woods somewhere getting the fuck away fine but i would 
I'd die in a fire before I moved to goddamn Texas. Fuck that. Ugh. But but the idea of uh, of parents who thought that taxpayers will do all the babysitting and uh, teaching of my children, yeah. and now they're stuck at home and they're making viral videos of their fucking kids going. Ah! <laughs> their fucking human resources fucking zoom call yeah, yeah fuck you yeah. and now no one's having babies which was the uh <laughs> hang on i'm gonna change my lighting here all right i like my lighting there. Ah. Stan, stan hope after hours mm -hmm. yeah i i feel like that's one of the ways i one of the many ways i've disappointed you is by having a child but I like I I honestly love every single second I've spent with my daughter. I've absolutely programmed her to be an awesome person, and she is. It's like she's great and fun to hang out with for me. And so, like, it is funny to me when I see parents bitching about their children or whatever, because it's like, oh, did you just turn on the TV and let fucking Barney into your house? I didn't do that shit. I, I taught my daughter to like cool stuff. And as a result, she's awesome. You know, she's a great hang. All so right. <laughs> All right, shit bag. You were <laughs> able to do that because at best you worked 45 minutes a night. Yes, that's absolutely true. That's, but in my defense, I made decisions that led me to that in life. Everybody can make their own choices. I decided my life was going to be awesome. Uh, first of all, we got lucky. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yes. A lot of people are deciding to be comedians. <laughs> very yeah. Yeah. Make it to a place where they can raise a child and make a living. Right. And I, I, I can guarantee you 17 years ago, you did not intend to have a child. No, it was totally an accident. She's an accident, baby. And we got married, uh, you know, uh, when my wife was three months pregnant. When my ex-wife was three months pregnant. I that was, like, if, if any listeners scroll together a fucking uh, a YouTube fucking montage of people that you know fucking hate the fact that they had children because they thought the state would pay for the fucking eight hours a day of school. Oh. Yeah. I fucking completely support teachers that are saying, no, we're not going back to work. Not till it's safe. And then unions. I, oh yeah. my God. All right. And now I'm, now I'm spiraling out on hate. That's all right. That's, that's, that's part of the brand. My mom was a school teacher and so was my grandma. And so it's like, oh, I've got, my dad. huh? My dad, my yeah. dad was, yeah. And so like, you know, I, I'm on their side. And honestly, like the, it, it's funny the way we've treated teachers here in Tennessee, they're vastly underpaid, understaffed, they're underfunded. Everything's fucked as far like education in Tennessee. Like I think we're in the bottom forties out of all the 50 states it's not good. And we ask a lot of them and it's at, like, I have been very lucky because I am in Nashville and we've, we flipped my daughter around from school to school to school. And now she's in this amazing high school, Nashville school, of the arts where every single student is uh, a visual artist or a dancer or a theater person or a musician. Like it, she has, there's no sports people. There's no like, um, I don't know. It, it like it. I, I keep telling her like you're lucky as fuck because this is a yeah. different high school experience. And, and right now she's watching Brandy Chastain porn. <laughs> I always wanted to be in sports, and my dad hated it. <laughs> now nah, she did Taekwondo. I put her into Taekwondo to just so she could kick kids' asses in the neighborhood that I wanted to fight, but I legally couldn't. So I put her into Taekwondo and she went and beat those motherfuckers asses and I laughed and got it on video. Um, and, and so like, that's the only physical activity we've done. She's all about 
She's all about video games and art and, um, you know, kicking people in the motherfucking mouth. I just remembered I took an edible uh, when I, and I'm looking at myself. If Do I look the same? Because we're both leaning into the camera. Yeah. So your head looks like 10 times bigger than your body. <laughs> That's a photography trick. Hey, if you're going to take headshots, you're supposed to put your head forward so your neck fat doesn't show up in the headshot. Oh, no. That's why the gator. The gator is <laughs> the greatest thing ever. <laughs> yeah, no, I get, I, get, I get the old man neck going. And then, oh, thank you, COVID. I love COVID for so many reasons. I do the too. The only time I've been suicidal is when I thought A, winter, and B, oh, it's going to end. They have a vaccine. I'm going to have to write a new hour. Fuck that. Man, I don't. What sucks is like I'm thriving. I'm honestly thriving this yeah. last year. And I, I don't like talking about it because so many people are suffering and having a trouble. But I mean, I've been a loner living in isolation, driving eight hours a day to sit in a hotel room waiting for my goddamn set and then, you know, hanging out, having a few beers and driving to the next goddamn town and and not not interacting and uh, and isolating just out of necessity. <laughs> I mean, out of, you know, I don't know, by virtue of the, the job description <laughs> and then, you know. I, like, and I, then I've been, I've been day trading. So like, you know, I, yeah, I'm not on the road. I'm not able to do shows. I'm not able to do shit. I made so. all my money in GameStop. That's it, dude. It's so fucking crazy. I've gotten the best financial advice in the world from motherfuckers who are like, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm a retard. I'm not a cat. Uh, diamond hands to the moon. And so <laughs> I don't do that. I, I, I bought GameStop like, three different times when it was rock bottom and then sold it when it was at the top. And it's not difficult. Buy low, sell high. And I've made thousands of dollars in just like three transactions. It's so batshit crazy how easy it is to make money if you understand that people are retarded and they're going to do dumb shit and you can just sit there and wait it out. It's been yeah, wild. It's yeah, I I, 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 don't understand it, and I, I I'm a stock guy. Uh, yeah. Not, I'm not. But at some point, uh, a friend said, "Oh, you should get into stocks." And I go, "Okay." So I get, I get all these stocks, and then they, they call me up. Listen, this is Steve Via for. I want to make some change. I want to make some moves, and they, they know I have no idea what I'm doing, but no. they're desperate to explain LHX they're a fucking tech company that's into military hardware and you what they have I, you know I don't care but yeah. it's like a comic that has to tell you their bits <laughs> like I paid for the ticket I'm gonna sit out at the front bar because I don't like comedy I just <laughs> and but they have Here's the bitch that I did. <laughs> I don't want to hear the bitch that you did. I just wanted to support you as a friend. Yeah. I get that. Get that. <laughs> That's great. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I have stocks like Pfizer. I know I have stocks in Pfizer. Yeah. And when, when they came out with the fucking, I go, oh, maybe I'll be rich now. Maybe. And actually, it's it's gone down from what I bought it at fucking fucking me yeah i i don't know shit but i've got a buddy who's super into crypto and uh he pays attention to everything and he's super righteous about it he'll tweet about stuff and he'll tweet about motherfuckers making money um that don't deserve money and anytime he says he's not going to invest in something, I invest in it, and then I make out like a bandit. It's fucking great. Sorry, uh, sorry for the darkness. I'm peeing. That's perfectly fine. Yeah, it's a strong stream. You're you're a viral man. 
who hasn't lost anything. Officially yeah, drunk. It's been good. I, viral, I can, viral is different than virulent. You know, it's it to me. I think they're the same word. That's how dumb I am. Yeah. The uh, I had a like when I had a real job. I was working at Vanderbilt, and I had a four hundred one k, and it was boring yeah. and tedious, and I hated every interaction with those people. But then, like, I, I for the last few years, I've had this Robin Hood account, and I just day trade and it it's been fucking it's been so fun it's like playing a video game making money off doing nothing i'll try to learn new things but i i i, I won't <laughs> I, I don't know if you and- I, I don't know if you will try I think I think you'll say you'll try, but then maybe you won't. No, but I'll read a book or, or even watch a documentary, and yeah. by the next day, I have no recollection of. I know if I liked it or yeah. didn't. That's it. My memory I, is I, such I, shit. Like it, it, but this is this is a good thing. I've I've come to embrace this. I've got a terrible memory. I've got the memory of a goldfish. But I've come to embrace it because, like, I can enjoy the same show over and over. If I go two years, I can watch Game of Thrones again and be just as excited because it's new yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah. No. And I, I used to worry, oh, that's because I'm a drunk. But then I talk to people who don't even drink that are my age. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember shit. I'm like, thank God. Yeah. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> It's it, not just the booze. Yeah, absolutely the same. I, I now that I pissed. I did tons of acid in the nineties and I, I I started getting worried, like, man, did that fuck your memory? And the answer is yeah, it did. But I would that's the thing. That's what exactly what I'm saying is I talk to people who are older that aren't fuck ups like we were. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, yeah I, I don't remember how I know that guy. Oh, yeah. good. It's just me. Yeah, it's I'm the same. A drink, Chad. Yeah, knock yourself out. Yeah, there's my my family has a history of uh, Alzheimer's and dementia, so like my my greatest worry, honestly, is you know not knowing what the fuck is going on and being a zombie. But I'm, I'm with you. Uh, uh, yeah, on that same, and I think about this a lot, not knowing when to kill myself because I let it go too far. Yep. Dementia. Yeah. Yeah. Where you go, oh, oh, fuck. I, uh, yeah. I missed my I'll, window. I'll wait till it's, uh, like at a point where, yeah, I'll wait till it's at a point that I don't remember anything and then I'll kill myself. Right. But you wouldn't know to kill yourself. Yeah. See? Okay. Now, here is where having a child becomes a, an asset because my instructions. No, no, no. It's not an asset. I, 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 I guarantee you're going to make the same point as me. And I'm going to say, no, that's a deficit, not an asset. Go ahead. Well, what if I have a kill switch set up where my daughter has been instructed to murder me in case of emergency? I've never been in this kind of situation before. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I just drop a plug for digging up mother? My first book, <laughs> <laughs> which was fantastic. The fucking, the last book is the only one that I can really uh, say I fucking, I, I stand behind. What do you mean? No encore for the donkey. Well, you're digging up, digging up mother was fine, but I'd never written a book before. Fun uh, with pedophiles one, is a goddamn book, sir. Yeah, that's the, that, the, the problem with that. Hang on. Oh, God damn it. Hang on, I have to go get more grapefruit juice. Shit, please. Hold. You love citrus and vodka. That's your drink. Yeah, but I realized at some point you need 
club soda. You don't need much juice. Little tiny grapefruit juice, little tiny pour, mostly club soda. That's how you get less fat, fatty. <laughs> hey, I, I, how I get less fat is playing Pokemon Go in the goddamn park and walking my dog. That's it. Yeah, I, I have to do that. that but my dog's old, so she walks slow, so I can. Now, who's your dog? Do you still have Henry Phillips? Yes. Henry. Henry, Henry. Phillips. Henry she Phillips. can't is, hear or see much anymore. That's probably for the best. Hen Henry Phillips is one of my favorite people on the planet. And I love that you named your dog after Henry goddamn Phillips. I think that's great. She's uh yeah, she's a sweetheart, but she hates me. Worst. Oh, you are drinking gin. Sorry, I just noticed that. I assumed it was vodka. No, I love vodka, but gin's my favorite. I love uh dirty gin martinis. And well, was that you have to edit out the entire beginning of this when I thought you were drinking vodka like Tracy. I'm, and I said, I knowing you were drinking gin. I'm not going to edit shit. I'm a lazy son of a bitch. And every second of this has been gold. No edits. Live and tape. I enjoyed this, Chad. Man, it's been so good and fun to talk to you. Uh, you're a beautiful, wonderful human. And I love you and all your people. Like you, you have surrounded yourself. You've surrounded yourself with uh, really the greatest, funnest people, and like it's fun. Like when you when you come through town, it's like you've got a posse. Some like it, it, in the early like I I met you first in like two thousand one, and it was you and Henry Phillips doing shows at Zany's, and it was fun as fuck. But then. Uh, I, I would come and see you no matter where you were, Zanies or Chattanooga or wherever. And we really, I think you first remembered my name in like 2005. No matter <laughs> where you were, and then we broke up. And then, but the funnest thing is like Chaley and Bingo and all the motherfuckers in your orbit are fun as shit. And, and that's, that's so great. That's just invaluable to have. To have, and, and it's nice to see that somebody can do comedy on their own terms and do shit the way they want to do. Use the system, use Los Angeles, use goddamn Comedy Central and all these motherfucking corporate pieces of shit. Use those motherfuckers for what they're worth. Organize their fan base and get a mailing list and, and be able to do shows on their own goddamn terms wherever the fuck they want whenever the fuck they want like you you have been an inspiration to me and so many other comics uh just on a business level you know like comedy aside just as far as running your business and running your life like you've done it your way and that's fucking huge that's that's so many people get caught up in all this other bullshit and i feel like of all the people i know uh, you, you've really run your business uh, in a very smart way. Well, it, I, I've taken a year off and uh, I, I, I didn't have to worry about, I, I, I wonder about how many comics overextended themselves. Uh, I hope you can hear me because you froze up. I can hear you. I, uh, so I, I wonder how many comics overextended themselves where like oh fuck i have to do drive-in theaters because yeah. yeah. i i bought a house in la thinking it would never end yeah I, yeah i've been living i've been living on the cheap in a small border town for 15 years and all my shit's paid for yeah uh, i don't have mortgages i don't have car payments and uh so it's smart yeah you know, I, I, I filed bankruptcy in 2011 and we um, 
we got rid of the house. We foreclosed on the house. I got. Oh, I think I remember you telling me about this. I did bits. So it's like I, I we did the foreclosure, bankruptcy and divorce all within a three month span. And I got out of the system. And then I started thinking um, like, OK, so if I'm going to live this lifestyle, how do I do it without being extended? Well, the answer is do not be beholden to banks. Don't ever get a mortgage. Pay cash for everything. Like really, and like I, this is funny. I went and I got I got asked to go talk to a, a group of middle school kids uh, on career day. They wanted uh, a comedian to come and talk to them on career day, and so I went and talked to the kids on career day, and I told them this. I was like, "Hey, all right, drop out of school now because you don't need any of this shit. This is all bullshit." These people are liars and they're full of shit. All you need is a cell phone with good reception, a car that gets good gas mileage, one or two changes of clothes, and some goddamn jokes, kids. So start writing them now. And <laughs> I was like, drop out. Get the fuck out of here and go tried, start slinging dick gonna, jokes. Yeah, Chad, I tried to do this when I, uh, when I was on the man show. Yeah. Uh, I wrote to the school, I hate the middle school. I went to two middle schools because we moved. Yeah. Uh, but the one I hated the most, <laughs> I, I wrote to them and I said, hey, I would love to uh, speak to the kids there. I quit school and I would like to talk to the kids about the importance of staying in school. My dad was a science educator yeah. in the Worcester Public Schools. Yeah. I just to be able to do that, to go, listen, I quit this school. It was a piece of shit. I fucking hated every second of it. So, yeah, that's the importance of staying in school. Get the and fuck they, out they of never here. responded to my email. It was so great. Now, I, I, had, I had 30 students in six different classes, and I told them the same thing every time, and then I took questions, and it was just so wait, we fucking this great. More than once? Well, one day, so one day, like each didn't fire you? No, well, it wasn't paid. So, like, I know what I'm saying they didn't. You did this. They allowed you to do this more than once. Yeah, the the teacher, the teacher was like, she she was like a a, a mid twenties girl. Like, I don't know what she taught, but like, she did. She kind of chuckled a couple times when I said shit. But she didn't care uh, about what I was doing. And, and you know, these kids had signed up for the the comedian talk on career day. So she, I, I guess her attitude was you get what you pay for, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. Free and worth every penny, Becker used to say. That's right. That's exactly right. Well, <laughs> shit, Doug. Yeah, How it is it's a blast. I'm glad. Uh, and let me know when you put this out. If you're yeah. putting this, out. I don't even know if you have a podcast. I think maybe every comedian has a green screen. <laughs> That's true. I've had uh, multiple podcasts over the years. The the one that I do under my own name, I do. It, it's called America's Favorite Podcast of All Time. And I'll, <laughs> I'll I'll put this up fucking tomorrow, and it'll be great. It'll be fine. This has yeah, been email. so fun. Doug yeah. Doug and hope.com yeah email me and go hey it's up and fucking give me a link so i can promote it hell yeah man i fucking love talking to you yeah thank you so much for being so good to me over the years like honestly when i met you it was 2001 and i was uh, uh, uh like eight months into comedy and i was in the habit of sitting in the back of zany's nashville and watching every fucking act that came through town. And I would show up Wednesday night, and then I would come back Thursday night. And if the show was different on Thursday night, I knew I had somebody I liked, and I would come out Friday night and, and see how they did the rest of the week. And a lot of motherfuckers would come and do the same goddamn act word for word fucking verbatim every single time they got on stage. And so if I came Thursday and some motherfucker did the same goddamn act he did the night before, I wouldn't come back and I wouldn't give a shit about that comic ever again for the rest of my life. But I saw you and Henry Phillips 
and you mixed it up. You had your core 30 minutes of material you did every single show, but you had a good yeah. 30 that you riffed and mixed up and changed around. And Henry was funny and off the cuff. And so I thought, oh, I want to see every goddamn show these motherfuckers do. And it was funny because every night, like the first night, Wednesday night, you wanted to go out drinking and everybody on staff wanted to go out drinking. So we went out drinking and there was like fucking 40 of us up in club in Nashville drinking and having fun. And you took care of the entire tab and I'll never forget that. It was cool as shit. Thursday night, less people wanted to hang out. About 20 staff and local comics came and hang out and you picked up the tab and it was cool. Friday night, it was different. Like maybe well, two shows Friday yeah, night. Yeah. So less people wanted to hang out after that show, the late show Friday night. And by the end of Saturday night, like you and Henry remembered and knew who I was. And, um, and by Sunday, like we were all friends and it was fucking, it was nice and it was cool. And then when you came back to town a year later, I was sitting in the back of the room in my spot and you walked up to the bar to get a drink and you saw me and you didn't remember my name, but you remember my face and you, you looked at me and you were like, you're a comic. And I was like, yeah. And Chad riding. And, and you were like, hell yeah. And uh, we hung out the rest of that week and whatever it was like some local dickheads wanted to go to another bar after the show. And you said to them, yeah, but I'm going to ride with him. And uh, you hopped in the car with me and uh, we went in my car to the bar and we hung out downtown, we downtown. Yeah. Yes. I, and I, I vague, uh, like dreamlike recollections of going with you downtown. Yes. I you always suggest not because of you, but I always suggest I, and I, I think I wrote about it in a book. Never go with the crowd to their yes. bar. Yes. And this is this is something I learned from you. You you can go meet somebody in a bar, but don't ride with them. So you you made the decision. You're like, I'm gonna ride with the local comic to the bar. And we did. You, me, and another local comic, Jesse Perry. We rode to the bar. We got out of the car and I'm locking my car up. And you made fun of me. I'll never forget this. You were making fun of me because you're like, what are they going to steal? Your baby seat? <laughs> and I was like, that is the most valuable thing in my car. And then right. we went, we're, we we're going to close on a drunk dial. We'll yeah. see. If we had a, such a great time. And then like the, the funnest thing, uh, Dave, uh, God damn Chad answers his phone. Chad Shake. Yes. Oh, a hero. No, sir. Hey, Chad, you're on uh, uh, the uh, what's your what's the name of your podcast? Right. America's favorite podcast of all time. God damn it. All right. This <laughs> is this is Chad Ryden. Do you remember when I, I would call you and I accidentally get the Chad that I knew before you? <laughs> <laughs> it's on Twitter, and that's how I come to follow Chad Ryden on Twitter, and now I know him. Uh, good. All right, you know each other. All right. Hell yeah. So, right, I, we we're just I, I was drunk dialing people that came up in conversation, and of course, I wanted to close on you. Uh, this is uh, Chad Shank. I'm sorry, Chad Ryden, for all the Chad Shank calls that you got. But I don't think uh, Chad Shank ever got a Chad Ryden call accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Chad Shank, you want to open up for me in fucking Little Rock? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. I got nothing else. I, I just wanted to close on you. I love you. Right on. Later, guys. Take care. Have fun. Bye. <laughs> I love that dude. Yeah. Hey, everybody should follow Chad Shank on fucking Twitter and Twitch. That motherfucker. At, at, hang on. It's at HD fatty. Yeah. Which is a uh, Harley Davidson fatty. <laughs> He's one of the uh, like 
there's so many people associated with us. Greg Chaley's yeah. email address makes no sense. And when he explains why he has that email address, it still doesn't make sense. Everyone has the, these fucking 1999 fucking handles weird handles i tell people all the time i'm like fucking make it your name make it easy for me to follow you don't make it at bat on a cat hat at fucking whatever.com god damn it make it easy for me and they don't yeah because they're fuck ups <laughs> doug i love you thank you We're so much up. yeah uh make sure to uh, uh email me to uh promote this i'll or do it man I I'll do I it. Twitter. Uh, I'm sorry. Do I follow you on Twitter? Hell no, Twitter. you don't. And it's it's one of the greatest disappointments of my life. Well, I'm gonna do. Uh, hang on. I'm gonna try to figure out how to do this without hanging up on you, Chad. Right. <laughs> hang on. Fuck. All right. Fixed. Thank you. Now, how do I get you back on the screen? All right. Now I follow you. Thank I you so much. That out. Thank I you. figured that out all by myself. See, you're a techno genius. Does There's people that I, I, I wait? I don't follow them, or they don't follow me. Is worse. <laughs> What's funny? Yeah, one time, uh, uh, Paul F. Tompkins fucking yelled at me one time on Twitter because I didn't. I was having a conversation with him, and he di I didn't follow him, and I, he was like. He was he was like you don't follow me like basically mic drop and I was <laughs> I was like I'm sorry but I don't follow every person I've ever met or talked to I I love you I appreciate your work but it's a, it's a that's a weird thing with with uh, the Twitter is uh, if you follow thirty two thousand people you go oh you're not legit kind right. of. Oh, I, I, I have 32,000 friends this year. I, I think I'm up to like 430 people I follow. Uh, but since I've been off comedy, I've actually watched specials of new fucking comics that I go, oh, fuck. Yeah, I, I never see new comics. I, I yeah. live in a small town in the middle of nowhere, and I travel with people I know. So I yeah. never see comedy. So, And I don't watch comedy on purpose because I don't want to get that in my head. Did I think of this myself? Or is this because I watched Sam Morrill or fucking Nate Craig? I'm dropping yeah. Nate here. I've <laughs> in a year. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, there's there are funny people out there, and uh, I, yeah, yeah, and that's I mean, I, 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 I've I've started following motherfuckers just because I I'm so bored, I'm hitting refresh on my feed. Like, please give oh. me give me more content. I need yes. more, I need more I funny need people to laugh more. at. I do that in the fucking morning. I was going to actually tweet about that today. Is anyone just sit here and hit fucking refresh, hoping for some, because I used to be on the internet for entertainment yeah. back in the baiting days, baiting yeah. pedophile. That yep. fucking, it was all entertainment. And now like, I, I what, what's the fun thing to do? Yeah. Like I check email and, Email is a pile of dirty dishes in my fucking <laughs> sink that I don't want to deal with. And then Twitter is just shit that makes me hate people. Yeah. And and then news or or whatever the news is, it just makes me anxious. And I'm like, where's the fun things? Yeah. Where's yeah, the I, fun websites I used to call? I re I restrict myself from tweeting every single day. Hurry up and tweet some more funny shit. I'm out of I'm out of funny tweets to like because god damn am I bored. You know, I'm doing god damn, I, I should tweet that right now. It's uh <laughs> baiting.org. Uh, last I know, they were still uh they, I mean it's been out of service, but it's been up. And hey. baiting.org is uh where it is like Chris Hansen but funny where is we that, would bait 
files into uh, AOL instant messenger chat. So baiting.org, yeah, reason.com mm -hmm. for news. Go to reason.com. They'll have a, a pro-Republican and pro-Democrat and pro-fucking libertarian stories all together. Reason, it's, it's it, yeah, it's not hype. Like, yeah, this is what's fucked up about this. Uh, but for fun, and, and tweet at Doug Stanhope to tell me something that's fun. Baiting.org, yeah. go to baiting, like fish bait, B-A-I-T-I-E-N-G. I don't know, I, I misspelled that, I think. You did, you threw an yeah. E in there. <laughs> I can see you're getting drunk as shit too. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so yeah, tweet at Doug Stanhope, like fun things to look at on the fucking internet. Hell yeah. Dude, Doug, I love you. And this has been great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for doing this. And, uh, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate, you know, everything you've done for me, even if you don't even remember it, I value it. It's fucking, it's been it's been a great 20 years of knowing your ass. You're the only Nashville comic I, 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 I know. I'm the only Nashville comic you need to know. God damn it. <laughs> That's not true. Laura Peak and Josh Wagner and fucking uh, Nate Bregazzi. Those are funny motherfuckers. That's it. Oh, wait. Nate's fucking Nashville? Yeah. He's clean. Hey, yeah, and you know what's great? Nate Bergazzi and you have the same birthday. You guys have the same Zodiac shit. He is clean oh. and Christian, and you Wait, are uh, not. My birthday. Do what? Nate Bergazzi yeah. is clean and Christian? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jeff, he's one of the guys that I fucking loved this year watching comedy. He's funny as fuck, dude, and his podcast is great. Everything he does is funny, and he's a great dude, and I love him to death. And you know what? The fact that he's... How do you know it's our birthday? That's creepy. I well, want to get out of the podcast because <laughs> you know both of our birthdays... I I keep up with I keep up with shit and I have a calendar. So I have your birthday in my calendar and I also have Nate's birthday in my calendar. I keep comics birthdays in my calendar uh because they're the people I care about. Um and I don't always say something about it or give a shit or do anything about it, but I do know and I, I knew that I, I knew that you guys had the same birthdays. You, you tweeted something maybe a month ago, whenever it was your birthday. And you were like, let's do a show where it's me and other comics who have the same birthday. And I was I tweeted at your ass, Nate Bergazzi. You guys yeah, should fucking do a show to be on because it's yay and yang. I, I, if I'm tweeting something drunk like that, I probably don't look at all the responses. Oh, I know. I know. I know. I, uh, listen, I, uh, there's whole now, decades because I follow you. There's whole decades of my life that at I Chad don't remember. Wait, yeah. wait, is it at Chad Ryden? It is. Whatever it is, I just followed. It is, Sorry. yeah. I, there's whole decades of my life that I don't remember. And I'm sure you have How the same. I'm 45. Oh, uh, you're yeah. yeah, I know. You should have got me when you were hot and sweet. I was never hot and sweet. I've I always, should, I've always been a piece of shit. Baby seat in the back of your car. That's, that's how I've always fantasized about it from now on. Yeah, I was 28 when I had my first child. I wasn't fuckable then, and I'm not fuckable now. I'll never be fuckable, Doug. It, it's never going to change. That's why you have to tell your fucking 17 year old daughter to stop <laughs> fucking sexting me those pictures because. She's a product of Chad Ryden. She'll never be good looking. Okay. What's funny is we are going to take some uh, erotic photos this next weekend and send them to you. And you're going to be goddamn sorry. No, gonna... Two months from now, two months from now, Delia rules. <laughs> uh, I said I wasn't going to edit this interview and I didn't want to, but 
I just I took it out a minute uh, of this conversation right here because we talk about two different comedians who are in the middle of legal battles right now about weird shit. And uh, oh, I didn't want to put that in here, but I, that footage will be in my Patreon as an exclusive. So go there to see uh, the rest of that line of thought. Uh, all right, now here's the end. Let's close it out. That's what I'm saying. I fucking love you, Chad Ryden. I love and you, I Doug. I apologize been... for all the... You apologize for what you cut out there? I said I apologize for all the Chad Shank calls that you got. Uh, but I think you really need to go back up to uh, Detroit because I realize you look just like Michael Moore. So you have to go back up and do a... A follow up to Roger and me. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, yeah. Back into the picture. There you go. Apolog you Apologize for nothing. I love you. You're the best. Have a good night. Tell everybody in your circle I said I love them, especially Brian, especially Bingo, especially Chaley, and especially goddamn Chad. Those are goddamn heroes, and uh, I love you and all of them, man. Have a good night. I love you, and fucking enjoy this drunk. We're <laughs> drunk together. Yeah. Once again, thank shout you. Shout out to Radley Balco. <laughs> well, that's it. I hope you had fun. I know I did. Thank you to Doug Stanhope, Mackenzie Green, Bingo Bingaman, Chad Shank. Follow all those people online, please. And me, Chad Ryden. Uh, please like and subscribe to this. Follow me everywhere on the internet. Get some merch. Get one of my CDs. And uh, thank you so much for watching this stuff. Uh, if you want to see the two minutes that we had to cut out of there where we were slandering comics, go to my Patreon. Um, other than that, thank you so much for putting up with my crap. Have a good night. Okay.